All right, guys, so hopefully you kept up with me today in class and you've completed the menu order worksheet and the menu order no tax worksheet. Uh, because right now we're going to go ahead and work on our own workbook here. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit this little plus sign and start a new worksheet for me. All right, and just kind of follow along with me here. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a little review about uh, worksheet names. So we're just going to right click on where it says sheet two and we're going to go ahead and say rename and we're going to call this one million dollars all right um it says it wants to be in landscape format and at a center footer with the name one million dollars all right so landscape format we're going to go to the page layout uh tab here and right here under the page layout tab where it says orientation, we're gonna go ahead and change that to landscape orientation. And I know you can't really see anything right now, but if we were to print this thing out, what I just did was I gave myself a few more columns and a few less rows. And you can see this little dotted line down here that's kind of cutting off. If I were to print this worksheet, that's where it would cut off right now, all right? And you can kind of see if I go back and change it to portrait. The dotted line has now moved down a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can find it right there all right so uh, the orientation of a worksheet affects the printing of it portrait will give you a few more rows than it will columns landscape will give you a few more columns than it would rows all right all right and now uh, we've got to go ahead and insert a header uh, we got to go to the header footer section because it wants us to insert a left footer with our name and the right footer it wants us to insert the date all right uh, and in the center it wants us to type in one million dollars all right so if that sounds weird to you it'll probably make more sense when you actually go to header footer um, and you'll see here that you actually have a, a left header a center header and a right header all right so in the center header we're gonna type in one million dollars all right uh, Oh, never mind. It was supposed to be a footer. <laughs> Boom. All right. So right here. See where it says go to footer? Boom. And now we're in the center footer. One million dollars. All right. Uh, it says on the right footer, it wants our name, uh, or our date, and in the left footer, it wants our name. All right. So on the left footer, I'm going to type in my name, and then on the right footer, I'm actually gonna go up here and I'm gonna say current date. All right, and then click off anywhere inside your worksheet to get out of header footer. And let me stretch this out so you can kind of see. That's the format of the date that it's using, which is fine by me. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. Not that much. Um, it says do a save as and save this file to your cloud account. So go ahead and do that, please. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way back up on my spreadsheet. And it says, it basically says, set up the spreadsheet so that it looks like this. In cell A1, it wants the item. In cell B1, it wants cost of item. In cell C1, it wants how many. And in cell D1, it wants a total. All right, so we're going to say item. We're going to say cost of item. We're going to say how many. And we're going to say total. All right, it says uh, make the following columns. Oh, and here in C12, we're gonna type in grand total. Right here, grand total. All right, and I know it looks like we need to widen up our columns and we will. All right, it says uh, widen columns as necessary, bold the labels in row one and in cell C12. All right, so widen the columns as necessary. Hover your cursor in between the A and the B and go ahead and click and drag and give column A a lot of room. You're going to need a lot of room here. All right. And then go ahead and hover between B and C and give yourself a little bit of room. You're not going to need much because that's going to be for money. And same thing for column C. You're not going to need much because that's just going to be numbers. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, just click and drag. I'm not going to go ahead and bold the whole row but I am going to go ahead and bold that out right there. All right, cells A1, B1, C1, and D1, and then I'm going to click in cell C12, and I'm going to bold that out as well. 
all right? It says left and middle align column A, all right? So I'm gonna click on column A, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say middle align and then I'm gonna say uh, left align, which it already is. The middle align thing, it kind of keeps my text in the middle of the cell if I were to widen up my rows, all right? It's like the middle uh, of the actual cell, all right? So if I were to make this row one really, really wide, which I don't need to, uh, that's how it would look, all right? And uh, it says middle and center align the contents of columns B, C, and D. B, C, and D, middle and center. All right, just like that. All right, it says format the numbers in column B and D for currency. So here's what I wanna do. Um, you can kind of do this too if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and type in just a random number in column B and then in, in a cell in column uh, D, all right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, control click on both letter B and C and right click on one of them. And I'm gonna go to format cells. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on currency I'm going to say two decimal places and I'm going to keep the dollar sign and say OK. All right, so now whatever number I type in there is automatically going to be formatted for currency. Pretty cool, right? I know. You're probably a little less impressed with this than I am. All right, um, let me scroll down a little bit. Using cells from A1 to D12, add borders using the all border style and any fill colors desired to cells A1 through D1. Make them appealing. When you're done, your spreadsheet should look like this. Okay, so borders. With my white cross, I'm gonna click in cell A1, drag it over to D and down to 12, all right? And then right here under the home tab, I'm gonna select all borders, all right? So it kind of looks like a table, a little defined area of my endless table that is Excel, all right? And now it says go ahead and make the following adjustments and I'm just going to go ahead and give my table header here a little fill color, a little splash of color. And since it's November, let's go ahead and go with this like orangish kind of thing, this fall autumn kind of hue. Okay, how are hue? All right, um, and column D, figure out the total cost of each item by writing a formula that multiplies the cost times the quantity. Used cell addresses to build the formula. Remember, total cost will be the cost times the quantity. Use the fill down feature and a relative cell reference to copy this formula to the rest of column D. All right, so pause me real quick because this isn't any different than the formula that we just used right here, all right? You wanna use the cost times the quantity. So click in here and look at the formula and see if you can't do the same thing right here, because that's kind of what I want you to do, cost times the quantity, all right? So pause me and go ahead and make that happen. Okay, so hopefully you figured out that formula, and I've got one right here ready to go, all right? And you can kind of see it in the formula bar. If you couldn't figure it out, this is kind of what you want to type in to cell D2, all right? And then go ahead and um, kind of search for the first item that you might wanna buy, all right? And I always say that somebody, you know, who just inherited a million dollars is probably gonna want a car, a nice car, and a house, all right? And um, here's what I want you to do. If you're gonna buy a house, I want you to go to Zillow.com. If you're gonna buy a car, you can just go to like any car dealership, kinda, sorta. Uh, but I want these things to be specific. I don't want you to just type in your spreadsheet, like, you know, in the item description, like home, you know, $500,000, no go. There are rules to this game, like I said, okay? You cannot spend uh, more than a million dollars. You can't spend less than a million dollars. It has to be a million dollars. Um, you can't buy 11 items. You can't buy nine items. They must. There must be 10 items. And not only that, but there's gonna be a trick to the game here in just a second. Uh, so right now, this seems pretty easy, right? You're gonna shop and kind of spend money and keep track of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the address of the home that I'm gonna buy, and I'm gonna go ahead and control C it. I'm gonna to go to my worksheet and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in, uh, going uh, right clicking and saying paste. I don't know if I can just hit control V, how it would look. See, it looks kind of weird. I don't wanna keep the formatting from the web page, so make sure that your copying and pasting from websites looks good, all right? We are not amateurs here. The cost of the item is, let's see, $350,000, all right? I'm gonna control C it. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and paste it in there. 
it says how many and I'm gonna buy one house all right and then you can see my running total here is keeping track of how much I just spent all right and as I go forward what I'm gonna do here is uh, get the details of every item that I'm spending the cost of every item that I'm spending and how many and then hopefully down here what I'm gonna do is insert something called an auto sum formula that's gonna keep a running total as I shop to let me know how close to that million dollars that I'm getting and remember you do have to get exactly a million dollars so I'm gonna go here to auto sum and I'm gonna go ahead and say sum and what this does is it automatically selects all of the cells above it and I'm just gonna press enter alright and now you can see here that I have spent three hundred fifty thousand dollars as I go ahead and shop uh, what this is going to do is it's going to keep track of how close I am to that million dollars. Let's go ahead and select cell D2. Hover your mouse in the corner until your cursor turns from a white cross to a thin black cross. And then go ahead and pull it down all the way to keep track of how much you're actually spending. All right. And now here comes the twist. What I want you to do as you're shopping and as you're filling your things here, as you're trying to keep track of your million dollars, you're actually going to actually uh, this year for the first time you're going to have to figure in tax into the equation all right so this little formula in cell d2 is got is about to get a lot more complicated oh and one more thing real quick if your columns aren't wide enough you might get this little error thing right here that looks like hashtags that means your columns are not wide enough to display the data that it's trying to show so go ahead and widen up those columns a little bit more all right all right, so you can see here what I did was in cell G1, I went ahead and typed in 6%. In Florida, that's our tax rate on everything we buy, 6%. As a decimal, that's 0.06. So go ahead and type that into cell G1 if you haven't already. All right, and check this out. What I'm going to do now is click in cell D2. I'm going to go up to my formula bar, and I'm going to go ahead and try to modify this formula. In real life, what I want this to do is multiply it times cell G2. Uh, one. All right, so I, I can just type that in times G1. Here's the problem. When I try to pull this formula down now to the other cells, uh, if I were to have any kind of cost here, you would see, um, let me see if I can just pull this down for example's sake. Okay, you can kind of see what it's doing here. Like on a $350,000 house, this is what I would pay in taxes, but that's not the total that I would pay for the house. And then when I tried to copy it down here, if you look at the formula references, now it's multiplying it by G2, which is nothing. So, you know, $350,000 times one times nothing is gonna be nothing. Uh, everything times zero is gonna be zero. So there's gotta be a fix here in the formula. And what I want you to do is go ahead and pause me and see if you can't work out, let me go ahead and fix this. See if you can't work out exactly how to fix uh, this formula in here, all right? I'm gonna undo this a few times so I can get out of here, but you got to get the point here, hopefully, is that you have to somehow multiply this times this and this, and then you're going to have to actually reflect the total of it right here. All right, so pause me and try to figure that out. Okay, so hopefully you figured it out because that was a little bit of math. Uh, and some of you guys are probably, you know, uh, better at math than other people. You know, that's kind of how I was in school. Sometimes I felt like I was really good at it in algebra, and then when I took geometry, I was horrible, but whatever. Uh, so um, here I have one house, $350,000. I'm buying one of them at 6% um, tax rate. I am going to spend $21,000 buying that house, so my grand total became $371,000. If you can't figure out this formula, and I'm not going to show it to you right now, if you can't figure out this formula, then go ahead and start shopping anyway. I advise against it because like this, taxes can be very, very expensive, all right? Um, and in the state of Florida, like I said, for this $350,000 house, we spent $21,000 in just taxes. That's not including like closing costs and inspections and all this other stuff that it costs to buy a house. Believe me, I know, I just bought one, all right? so. Um, this is called $1 million. Have fun while you guys shop. Make sure that your uh, descriptions are really accurate. And one more thing, go ahead and click on column A here and go to the home tab real fast and see this little function right here. 
called wrap text, go ahead and click on it. That way, just in case um, column A isn't quite wide enough to display all your contents, you can kind of widen it up a little bit and still get a full display. You can do something kind of like that. That's what wrap text does. Uh, you might have to widen up your rows a little bit, but go ahead and uh, wrap text on column A because your item descriptions might be kind of long. All right, have fun with this. Uh, at this point, you should have three worksheets, menu order, menu order, no tax, and then $1 million. All about absolute and relative cell referencing. All right, so again, if you couldn't figure out this formula right here, uh, what I did use, I'll give you that hint. What I did have to do is I had to make this cell right here an absolute cell reference. So kind of look and see what we did here in the menu order worksheet in this formula, all right? Or sorry, in this formula. See that? And there's a little hint on how you can make this work for you. If you can't figure it out, uh, play around with your formulas later and go ahead and do some shopping now. But make sure you keep a little bit of balance uh, at the end of your uh, project because you know you're going to have to figure tax into this whole thing. All right? This should be fun. And again, this should get you used to using basic formulas and functions in Microsoft Excel.